This is Hannibal here from TheHannibalTV.com. We have two-time WWE Tag Team Champion, former AWA Champion, former Intercontinental Champion, Marty Gennetti. How are you doing today, sir? Well, the last time that Al Snow was on your show, you got the information wrong to him. Okay. Do you remember you had asked him, you like, you think Marty says he slept with five, do you think that's really true, 5,000 women? I didn't say 5,000. I said one. 1,000. Okay. Yeah, you but you told Al five, and he still he still said, "Well, I've seen boxes and boxes of pictures, but it still it was a thousand. I don't want anybody to think I'm lying. The you five know. is just I tell people five thousand. I mean, a thousand was work. I mean, you know, you, know, you had to get several. Is there people in the background? Are you being <laughs> robbed? What's that? Are you being robbed? Oh uh, yeah, I mean, we are in Thugville. So, so we, got, we got mean mugged on the walk, walking. I don't, I don't know what happened there. What happened? I'm gonna say it's Eric's phone. All right. Well, let, let's hope not. So, as far as Al Snow, <laughs> um, what else? Do, he was <laughs> telling him. Uh, y'all can't. Y'all, you, you, I can't hear it all if y'all do that. Would you? What were you saying? Okay. Which? Who's interviewing me right now? <laughs> I know that part, but somebody else. Was that you? Okay. I think we're ready. All right. So for, for Al Snow, um, are you still climbing? Hey, you can you hold on? Can you no. hold on? Let me get sunglasses. Yes. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Go ahead. No, like, are you finished at a thousand women or is it still climbing? Oh, it's, it's, it's almost going downwards now. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's it's you know I'm not on the road that much because of my ankle, and so you know there's there's only so many women in Columbus, Georgia. <laughs> yeah, I heard a rumor. It only that, takes three nights and you've done there. <laughs> yeah, I heard a rumor. I won't mention her name about you in a more recent WWE diva from from the two thousands. Would from that have been a possible rumor? Like a, a a diva that would have been in the WWE in the early two thousands. A diva. Yeah. Huh. I can't think of. Them. Give okay. me your initials. Uh, I don't want to get in shit with her. I don't either. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just say, even if it's true, I'll say no. Okay. But I'll do like this on top of my head, and that means yes. Like like she like she can't hear that right <laughs> or see that. So, yeah, so we better I, leave that alone. We don't want to get no heat with nobody. There's too many more out there. Yeah, there is. And as but far as Al Snow, you were mentioning that uh, you saw him talk about you in the interview. He was saying about all the ribs you pulled on him. Do you have a favorite rib that you pulled on Al Snow? I think my favorite one <clears throat> was, you know, we always used to do the one where, where you know, the guys, how they are to wait till you're done with your shower. And talk, as soon as you open the curtain, the cold water bucket, you know, the ice water challenge shit. And, and that too, sometimes you dump it over. They ain't, they're not expecting it, ice cold water. But uh, I used to, so, you know, I, I get bored easily. That's just ADD, HDDH. And uh, so a lot of times I would, um, you know, I'd, that was my go to. Like, wait, soon, soon as you hear the water go off, because he'd always forget to lock the door. Until after a while, he'd lock it. He made sure he locked it. But then I knew how to pick the thing, and so he wasn't expecting it, and wham, every time. So I, one time, I, uh, I he left to go down to the lobby, and I'm in the shower. If I only see me, does that mean it just connected? Hello? I'm, I'm there. I just took it out so you didn't have to see me shaking my head up and down. Why were you shaking your head up and down anyway? All right, I'll you, just you've I'll, stare, I'll stare blankly. You you've changed, brother. Yeah. <laughs> but so this this one time Al goes down to the lobby for something other, and I forgot why. But and so that was my perfect opportunity. I got the the, the sink was out by the thing. I got a bucket of ice. But anyway, he came back in. I left out in the bathroom. I left the door cracked an inch. And I was like, oh, no, oh, shit. And he goes, what? I can hear him right out there. 
And I'm like, man, don't do it, bro. I'm so, man, damn. He goes, what are you talking about? I said, I didn't lock the door. And he looks and he sees this cracked a little bit. He goes, oh, okay. Oh, and then I hear him filling the cups of water, right? And I'm like, he's going to get me. I'm like, please, no, Al, I won't get you no more. No, he goes, too late now. <clears throat> and he pushes the door open. And I had the bucket of the ice water over the door ledge. <laughs> when he opens the door, pow, is all over him. And it's perfect. It's just streaming down. He's standing there with two cups of water. And the disappointment, the dis <laughs> look on his face, he goes, why do I even try? And he took the water that he had for me and dumped him over his own head. And that was, that was one of my favorite because he – you got, you got conned in to getting guy. <laughs> what about the one? It's silly, but it's silly. But sometimes it's what we have to do, like to break the monotony on the road. Especially like three hundred days a year. You know, it was just three hundred days a year, but sometimes it was three hundred twenty-five, three hundred thirty shows because of the double shots. You know, did you have yeah. to do that when you were there? No, I w I was not in there. I'm only a reporter. I never, oh, I never okay. In there. I wasn't good enough. No, you were good enough. You just you hadn't. It wasn't your time yet. <laughs> yeah, there's a fan on here that says he saw a lot of matches of you guys and the powers of pain. Uh, did you yeah. guys call that in the ring, or did you talk about it uh, in advance? No, you just go with it because they're so big. They're going to do what they want to, and there ain't nothing you can do about it. <laughs> but we. Uh, we kind of got like a, a routine, not necessarily a routine that we, you know, we strictly did that because, you know, every crowd is going to be different. And if you just stick to one routine, what works in Philadelphia may not work in Chicago. What works in Chicago may not work in L.A. So, you know, you got to that's that's the problem with, with pre calling this shit, you know, and having the whole match set up. It's if they're not buying it, you're fucked. <laughs> you know, oh, yeah, can I cuss? That was an accidental yeah, I cuss. I don't, I don't mind if you cuss. Well, let me hear you say cuss. Fuck. I'll, I'll say cuss. Uh, yeah, all right. I'm not going to cuss no more. I'm sorry about that one. No. Sorry, y'all, right. fan bill. No, it's all right. As far as when you wrestled with uh, the Quebecers, Carl Willette was telling me you, you used to make fun of Jacques a lot. He used to play, and one thing, one thing, I love him to death. I love both of them, Raymond too. Um, one thing that, that Jock hated the most, I mean, he hated when I would say, hey, yuck. And he was like, oh, man, don't, that's not my name. I said, I know it's not. And he goes, I said, why, why does it bother you? I'm just exaggerating your name. He goes, it sounds like you're hocking up and you're going to spit. I said, yuck. I guess, I guess you're right. <laughs> and so I said, oh, I won't do it that much anymore. He goes, no, don't do it at all. <laughs> so whenever I would, like we'd be in the ring, you know, only ringside people can hear you. But I, I'd say from across the ring, I'm like, hey, yach, I'm going to come over and arm drag me. No, I'll arm drag you. Yach. Are you here? I mean, he would just put his head down and shake and be so disgusted. But uh, that's about the only ribs because. Yeah, I didn't want him to dynamite kid me. <laughs> yeah. You were there for that, weren't you? Weren't you I was there? in the ring when it happened. Uh, okay. When I say in the ring, not for a match. Sean and I was out there doing what we always would do, thinking about uh, Sean Michaels. I don't know if y'all know that, that guy. He uh, goes by uh, HBK and the Showstopper. We used to tag so uh, as the Rockers. Just, just giving them a background, you know, the backstory because they may not know who he is, um, <laughs> but they know me, of course. But hey, so uh, we were in the hair. ring. You gotta, you gotta love that you still have your hair and he's lost his. Oh man, that's horrible for you to say. I bet you won't take that skull cap off. No, no, I'm, I'm in the same category as him. You're I didn't know that. I'm sorry I said that now. Yeah. I was just kidding. <laughs> but ain't nothing wrong with being bald. A lot of girls say this bald is beautiful because I think it reminds them of the tip of a dick. But but uh, I'm not sure about that either. I thought but it was I, uh, the mushroom cut. The mushroom what's cut. What's that? Remember the mushroom cut that people had in the 90s? Yeah, I was there. I remember, but I kind of – yeah. Um, was that like the picnic table top, like the black guys were wearing the flat 
and then it kind of dropped. Just, I, I, yeah. Bad news, uh, bad news. Brown called it a picnic table. Okay. Because it, yeah. it was flat. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Billy Jack. <laughs> yeah, he, How's he, he doing? He's he's doing great. Other than his his wife's ill, sadly, he's got a wife. Oh, did you? I'm sorry to hear that. Wow, yeah. wow. Should, I should have called. I didn't know what I called him and said. Sorry. Did you know him? Were you friends with him? Yeah, we were involved with that CTE lawsuit. No, he's the one that got me in. I didn't want to be a part of it, but I think I might have talked about that on your show before. before I don't where I don't think you did. Uh, well, it had to do with the ankles, you know, and I had called up. You remember they have the wellness program yeah. where the guys that are, you know, need to go through rehab for drugs, recreational yeah. or whatever drugs. Um, but I, my brother's the one that actually told me, he goes, would you please call them and tell them your ankles are what needs fixing to go there for, you know, for pain pills. Cause I was taking a lot of them. Um, he said, I'm worried you're going to be the next victim that I have to hear about my brother OD. And he said, why don't you call them and ask them? They'll fix your ankles. Said, going to rehab is not going to fix the source. And that's what rehab's all about is finding out what's the source of your problem that, you know, you want to do these things or so much or whatever. Um, and so I, I thought, you know, one, well, yeah, I guess you're right. Cause nothing against these are my guys. I love Jake the snake and I love, you know, Scott Hall, rest in peace. I love Sonny rest in jail. Um, I, you know, I love everybody. Um, they, but they, you know, they were getting put through rehab 10 to 12 times. I mean, so I figured, okay, I'll ask them if they can just fix my ankles rather than send me to rehab because that's not going to fix you know, the source, the source of the problems. Right. Um, I said rest in jail. Is, I think she's actually in prison, so it would still be RIP. Um, oh, but so, <laughs> I'm sorry, Tammy. Love you. Loves, loves you. Um, did you see that uh, dark side of the ring with her and Chris a couple weeks ago? Yeah, I did. But you want to fit it? I'll ask you about that. But finish your story. Why wouldn't they give you the the ankle? Oh, oh. So on that, yeah, I skip a lot. I skip. Yeah. Where where my co-hosts go? Oh, um, for my show, for my podcast. Party with Marty's going to be a podcast soon. Oh, cool. I, and I want my goal is to be almost as good as yours. When I um, I don't think I got the money for that. But I'm more, you know, that's goal to set because if I come close, then it's going to be decent. When I oh, when I did the way, first, that's the mushroom cut, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I did. When you do that, like a, a cut away like that, do you already have to have it set? No. Well, we can we talk about. Up, I I looked it up to find to show you what I'm talking about. Oh, so you can you're right there. You can type away yeah. and, and pull some. Okay, yeah. that's cool. But yeah, you got to teach me some tricks. I was mostly impressed by your uh, 48 cameras on that one little reel, the straight across reel. Or, or yeah. whatever you would call it. Man, I love that. But that's got to be some money. Yeah. And then when I, when I saw my interview with you, it was like you could cut from the side view while I'm talking. And I, uh, two views at one time. I was like, wow, man, this is better. I ain't seen nobody else with that setup. That's, I mean, it had to be some money, but it's fucking, it's got to be worth it, right? I, th I think that one got well over 100,000 views. So that one was pretty good. Yeah, but I'm just talking about your production end of it. You oh, know, yeah, like the, the sure. on the railing thing with three cameras. That's freaking great. I've not seen anybody else with that. So, but, so um, why didn't they uh, give you? Oh, yeah. So sorry. <laughs> uh, I, now, I don't want to say uh, Ann Russo's name, but the person that was in charge of the wellness system uh, program, um, I, and I knew her well. We were you know, friends, and. Um, I told her, I said, look, I mean, can you, you know, fix my ankles? My doctor, ankle surgeon, is one of the best, Lee McCluskey, he's one of the best in the world. He studied under Dr. Andrews, and everybody knows him. And uh, Lee had told me, and we played football together in high school and college, so, you know, it's, I, I call him Lee, and I, I feel bad when I'm in the doctor's office, and I'm like, Lee, and I'm like, oh, shoot, Dr. McCluskey. Yeah. You know, wanting to be respectful around all the other people that he's, you know, he's doctor to, uh, he's doctor to me, but, um, 
what was I saying about Dan? Oh, 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 yeah. He told me he had seen them, and he goes, God, you got the ankles of an 80-year-old. And uh, he goes, you need to get them. We need to get them soon. I said, well, I got to get the right insurance. He goes, I don't, you don't need to pay me. He said, but the hospital, that's a separate charge. And he goes, and I'll make sure they'll make a payment plan for you. So I had told the, you know, them that. And uh, I said, you know, if, if it won't be that much. I mean, you, I won't have to. I mean, y'all spend more on rehab for Scott Hall going every other month than, than that. And, uh, you know, she is. And I said, also, you can take it out of my royalty checks because, I, you know, what y'all made on me last quarter would pay for it. You know, I, I, you know what you, they make because, it, you know, it shows the breakdown, the itemized, like what they sold, how much they got, how much they gave you, which is minimal. <laughs> and I don't want to burn no bridges with them like I got one. <laughs> but um, they, uh, she has said, the final thing was she is like, she said, uh, and I, I don't mean she because I didn't, I didn't say Ann Russo's name, right? No. Uh, I didn't, I don't want to say a name who was in charge, but, um, I think so, got so, concussion issues anyway, so it's hard to remember. Who? Who? Do, yeah, yeah. We, both, we both do actually. But you got CT. Uh, I got memory problems due to concu too many concussions. Yeah, you, well, that's yeah. almost the same thing, I guess. Yeah. Um, you know, RVD. You know, Rod Van Dam. He was telling me one time. He goes, "I don't think he got CTE." So him and I are pretty good friends. He'll sh he'll shoot straight usually. <laughs> I say usually because I don't know when he doesn't. <laughs> but um, but he told me he goes. I don't think you got CTE because usually CTE they can't put a sentence together or they're you know very cognitive. And uh, I mean he could be right. There's 13 known symptoms as of now. It might be more as as of last time. The attorney that I went with, um. I had I had uh, ten of the twelve, and I was telling my attorney, I said, um, I don't have the one where mood swings. And my girlfriend pops up right away because yes, you do. So I said, okay, I got I got twelve of the thirteen. The only one I don't have is suicidal thoughts, and um, and that one a few weeks later that one started changing. But um, so anyway, she is uh, whoever it was had said that. Marty, you got a very valid point, but if we were to do that for you, it would open the floodgates to help everybody else. And I just thought that's a shitty damn thing to say. All these people that are made your money and gave their life, and and I mean, you don't want to open the floodgates for fixing them. If they're if they're making the money like y'all made last quarter of me, damn sure should fix them uh, according to what they're you know. Yeah, but um, that that was when I said, you know, the hell with it. I'm joining that CT, CTE lawsuit. I never wanted to, but it was just because you know, I had like she even agreed if it was a she. And these days you can't tell, but <laughs> but if it was a uh, uh, situation of, of it would open the floodgates. I even said, look, I'll sign a no disclosure or whatever it's called, confidentiality. Where I, I ain't got to tell nobody, you know, but, uh, you know, as my brother said, I don't want to, my brother don't want to read me into obituaries tomorrow over something that could have been uh, avoided. So, yeah. but that's, that was the whole CT reason. I, I didn't like it because. I don't know. It just seems weird. You're here in pro wrestling. You don't think you're going to, that's like boxing. You don't think you're going to get a couple of good shots. <laughs> But, yeah, it's true. Billy Graham had to beg fans to pay for his medical bills, and he never used the rehab either, but they wouldn't pay for his uh, hip surgery. So it's the Billy, same. Billy thing. Graham wasn't that a preacher? The the wrestler. The wrestler. It was a Billy Graham uh, wrestler? You talking yeah, about Mike was. Graham? Yeah. No, well, he was related. He was, oh. he was related in wrestling to Eddie Graham. He oh, okay. Was that world. Graham family. Yeah, they had the same problem. Anyways, about uh, Sunny Dark Side of the Ring, what did you yeah. think about it? Um, I thought it was. I mean, I found out a couple of things. You know, we you, generally it's your friends. You know everything of, of the ones I've seen. I've only seen like five or six episodes. I don't know how many they've had. That there were season four, so I mean, and there's ten episodes, so they must must have a few. But I've seen six, and. 
I man, most of them I learned a lot that like, wow, I didn't know that. Wow, it was like um with the Sonny and Chris one, I knew pretty much all of it. Um, and some people complained, you know, how they made her look bad. N no, if they could have, they wanted to, they could have really, really made her look bad because they held back. I, I know it was bad enough, but it could have been way, way, way worse, you know, and that's just the shit I know. Tell, that us just you know tell, tell us something that you know about her. About uh, so, uh about Sonny? Sonny, yeah. Let me they think. I mean, yeah, I don't want to. No, I don't want to do that. I don't want to rat rat hour talk shit. But I just thought the time that she, in Australia that she came out of the bathroom in the bus all you know gooped out, and the the syringe was hanging in her arm still. Um, I think it was Newbane back then that the boys were all into. But everybody was doing it in the you know intramuscular, intramuscular. Um, and some, some would bang it, you know, run it in the vein. And, you know, I guess it hits you probably cause it hits you so fast, you know, cause it's direct main thing. But, um, not for, you know, for myself, that was a, no, man, <laughs> you know, I'll just do without the, you know, uh, for me and a couple of others, it would be like to go work out because you can work out. There's no, uh, lactic acid. Well, there's still lactic acid buildup. But you don't, it doesn't, that burn, you know, you don't get it. So you could just keep going, you know, extra reps. But, uh, and then also for pain. I mean, I don't know any wrestler <laughs> that's not in pain after his match, except, except for, uh, when Nikolai Volkov was alive. <laughs> Nikolai, rest in peace, is another good friend. But I mean, you can't really be in that much pain if you don't. He used to take what we call the kickstand, uh, uh, bump where, He'd throw one leg under, go down to his hip, down, roll down to his yeah. shoulder, and then take the bump, like throw his arm down. It's like, gosh, damn, can you do that in any more slow, slow motion? <laughs> Couldn't make it slower. I, I got to ask you if uh, Sonny was one of the thousand. I, I don't mind telling you, no. Um, and and it could, it, it's not that it couldn't have been, and it's not that it wasn't offered. You know, I, I hate to say it that way. But, I mean, to me, and it's not that I don't think she's a pretty girl. And it ain't like I didn't hear her next door quite a bit. You know, when I say next door, the room, the, like the room next door, I would hear her. And, and I even thought that, excuse my language, but I even thought it would be in, improper to jack off listening to her. <laughs> because, <laughs> well, because, because it was Chris's girl, you know? So, right. I mean... And I liked Chris so much that it, it, that was just something that would never happen. Not just with them. I mean, that's just, I mean, I, I ain't got many morals, but, you know, one of the boys' girl, um, no, I, I, I can't do that. Um, and, and married women, that's, I can't, those are, I can't do. That's, <laughs> I don't have many morals, like I said, but those, those are no-nos to me and always will be. There's a fan on here that wants to know if you have a story about the ultimate warrior getting lost on his way to the gym. Have you ever heard? Yeah, of in that? Detroit. Yeah, uh, we were. Uh, uh, you know, we all all the guys know where the gyms are. If you don't, you ask one of the boys. And you know, warrior. Uh, we were just going to the gym. It was right up the street from the hotel that we all. You know, when I say we all, most of us stayed at, and. Uh, for for my Detroit um, people, there it's uh, it's I can't remember Moon Road. No, that that's Pittsburgh. Man, just the roads. You don't need to know the name of it. We're heading to the gym. It was like a mile down the street from us, and uh, well, here comes Warrior. Uh, how you tell it turned around and got in front of us. Turned around and going down the street, but he gets pulled over. The police pulled him over, and he he jumped out of his car and went that you know that wild look he has like when you go to the ring, running down to the police car right, and he goes, "What the fuck are you doing? I'm late for the gym." And the policeman's so scared, he's like he's crouched in his car and he cracks the window a little bit. He goes, "You were on the wrong. You were going the wrong way on a one way." <laughs> That's and then the warrior didn't figure he was doing anything wrong. So he was attacking a police car. <laughs> he was just so high strung on everything. 
I loved him to death, but nah, he was a bit crazy. <laughs> As far as your dark side of the ring, I know you're not allowed to talk about it. Uh, about it's not that I'm not allowed to. It's just why well, talk about it, and then there's yeah. no reason to watch it. But they, <laughs> did they follow you around for like three or four days? Could you just tell us a bit about like what's yeah, so yeah, about it? yeah. We we actually it was the you know, we we were going to interview for a couple hours and do on locations around town, like some of the stories that I told, like go take shots of it. Um. And and the interview, just talking to yourself, like what me and you are doing right now, it was like that lasted like the first day. That lasted like four or five hours. And, I, you know, I didn't, I mean, it goes by fast. Like with me and you, it seems to go by fast. I guess when you're enjoying it or you're getting into it, you know, and you look up and it's like, damn. It's, you know, we, and we wasn't even finished. They, they were like, yeah, we still got a whole lot of material here that we was going to ask you. You know, so we um we did a day two. We figured we would wrap it up, get the other half, and then uh, go back on the locations like they wanted to. Well, day two was a repeated day one, and we went like so long, and and they're like, okay, well, we got to stop now. And we looked up at the time, like holy shit! So I mean, we had like maybe eight hours of talking, interviewing, you know, stuff. And they said, so they said, would you do one more day? Would you do a third day and go around town? And so just, they said, no more interviewing. So we'll just go around town and get shots, locations. And uh, for some reason, one of the places we went was a bowling alley. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and uh, we went by my high school, I think. And the, the one girl in town that used to be a he, he was a she way before anybody else had, had started doing that, at least in Columbus, Georgia. And uh, that really was all they had. There was one area I told them, I had told them a story about, you know, uh, some things that went wrong. Uh, and it was a in, in a neighborhood that you know might not be the best because the last time a, a American Journal went through there. I think I talked about that on your show, but uh, went through there. The, the truck, the van got stopped and I was able to get away from them. And I come back later it's like to thank the guys for all I needed is a block off. Block them because they're following me and I'm trying to get to the gym. Um, I talk about the gym a lot for no built, <laughs> for no built. Yeah, but, great. um, Shit, man! I've lost so much since this sickness I got, the sepsis shit. But um, yeah, and 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 so when I when we went back, I, when I went back, this was another time, you know, to say hey, thanks for blocking them off. They come running up inside of the car with cameras and you know, all kinds of microphones and and the whole equipment from the van. I'm like, oh my god, what did y'all do? Like, hey, Marty, we got some stuff out of there. Oh man, did you hurt anybody? Like, no, we ain't hurt nobody. But um, yeah. So I told them about that dark side crew. And by the way, I loved them to death, every one of them. Uh, Tara, I work with closest, um, and sweetheart, and very good at what she. They're all very good at what they do. Um, uh, I, I enjoyed, and they, the feedback was they enjoyed working with me too. So that was cool. But um, I worked with help. Too. I, what I was going to say, the though, episodes this year, too, the July 25th episode. So say again, I worked with them, too, this year. I'm in the Abdullah the Butcher episode. Oh, right yeah, here. yeah, yeah. That's so, July 25th. Yeah, I don't know. I could look up when yours is. I think it's August 8th. August 8th. There you go. You're the main event. You're the yeah. last match. I feel good about that. It's been so long yeah. since I've been main event at anything except, you know, at parties with a lot of girls and guys and. What do they call it? Orgies. I don't do that shit anymore because I'm kind of getting old. You guys <laughs> closed the show, though, because th didn't most of the time Macho Man or Hogan want to go before the main event? Yeah, that was, yeah, all the time because they want to get out because, you know, they'll they'll get mobbed at the end. Whereas, like I think I told you, Madison Square Garden, we would park at the Ramada Inn, which was up the street, and get an ambulance to go there. Just so that they didn't see you, because they knew they knew the 
they, they could see you in you if you didn't have tinted windows in New York. I don't know if you're allowed to have tinted windows, but you know, whatever the case, they will notice you because you got to come through them and go down a ramp or whatever. Hey, you got to go through them. If they notice you, you're, you're, you're stuck there for a while. And if you don't, like if you keep it edging up, they'll start beating on the car and rocking the car. So they would take us in the ambulance to get in and to get out like at the end of the night. But finally, the fans caught on to that. Like, okay, the ambulance is the guys. They just didn't know which ones were in there, but it would be so late. They knew where well, it had to be the guys in the last match, you know. So they was even the ambulance would start getting rocked sometime. But yeah, uh, but that, and so Hogan and Macho and you know Warrior and them sometimes they didn't want to get bothered with that, so they would flip them down to the match right before intermission because the match after intermission that's the real popcorn match because you people are not even back yet from concessions or bathroom or whatever. So, but so anyway, yeah, we got flipped, and we were main event by proxy. I, I don't know if proxy is the right word, but um, we were main event because they didn't want to go on last and be caught and all that shit. They would go out early. They, when you go out before the show was over, you didn't have to worry about nothing because you know they they ain't, they're still at the show. But um, when you would uh, you know, last one, you you're gonna have problems. I mean. You still got to the Ramada in one piece and get you get in your ride and, you know, get the hell ever where you're going to go. But, uh, yeah, so, so we got to be main event by by default. That's probably a better way. <laughs> by default, we got to be the main event. When you guys were at your peak, what's the most women you were with in one day? When you guys, A lot of the team? guys say whatever number they want. For me, uh, I think it was three. Uh I, I I know the the guy. You know, it's. I think after three, it's disrespectful. Yeah. <laughs> and what's what's this story about you stealing the WWE bus in Europe that got you fired? One of the times you got fired. Well, and it, and it was there was I had good reasoning because um, the driver was. I don't know. If, I think that at first it was just uh, the air brakes were tight or whatever because you know when he would slow down, it was like all of us would be jerking and we're like, Hey man, easy on the brakes. And I think he, cause we said that he went a little harder, you know, like wham, wham, hitting the, the air brakes and, and Roddy Piper got rest as though. Um, he has said, he said, uh, uh, he asked the guy nicely, he goes, sir, could you please stop hitting the brakes so hard? And I think to the guy, I actually think he started doing it on purpose from that point on, which now it pissed us off because he's disrespecting Roddy directly. And uh, Pat Tanaka, one of my best friends, he was sitting right next to me, and, and I was like, I'm going to get him. And Pat's like, nah, just let it go. No, nah, I'm going to get him. And I didn't know, have no idea how. And we're in, in Europe. I think it was England, actually. And um, I guess that's Europe. <laughs> but so we had to stop, like in the middle of nowhere. One of the M's, M, like over here, it's interstate. There's an M, which I think stands for motorway, uh, M63, or wherever the hell it was. I, I, I knew where the hotel was from there. But we all got out to pee on the side of the road, um, you know, coming back from the show, like two or three in the morning, uh, if that late. But, but it was late. And, and um, so everybody got back on and because I was telling them, hurry, 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 hurry. And and one of them, I'm not going to mention his name, he takes 30 minutes to pee. He stands there and pees forever. And I was like, no, nah, man, just wait. Just wait. We'll be back at the hotel in a minute. He goes, not with this guy. I said, don't worry about that. I got behind the wheel. He was still out. The driver was still pissing. I got behind the wheel. I put Because I, I know how to drive. I drove a tractor trailer truck before I got into wrestling. So and left his ass on the side of the road and got us to the hotel. That, but I think that we, he deserved that. <laughs> don't, don't you agree? He was yeah. fucking with the boys. Yeah. Yeah, that wouldn't happen nowadays because people would film it and there'd be evidence. Oh, yeah. There's that. so much. We're, there's so, we, we, we go as like double-edged sword there's, yeah. or, or double loss or whatever you call it. Catch 22, you can't win because there's a lot of things 
that would have been nice <laughs> if we had cameras. And there's a lot of things. Thank God you didn't have camera phones. <laughs> is, it, is it true Pat Patterson personally fired you over that bus thing? No, I didn't get fired for that at all. I got fired for other things, but not that. So that's a fault. We're clearing something up here. You did not get you, fired over that. Yeah, you, you'd be surprised how many false rumors are out there. Is it true you hold the – well, now that the Sheik is dead, you definitely – He can never come back and beat me now. No. And I, I – you know, I, uh, and I hate saying it that way, you know, because I love him to death, and, and he's gone. Um, and that was sad for like a week. I mean, you know, it still holds a place in my heart. So I say you're sad for a week, but that was just – it's devastating, you know, because that's that's my boy, man. And that, that was devastating for a while. There's a few of them that were, like Kurt Hennig, Mr. Perfect. That one really hurt bad because, you know, for one thing, he was like our our teacher, you know. And that, I, I don't want to put that on him. I, he's got family, never mind. But but he just knew how to mix the stuff. And, and in fact, he had a cocktail he, he called because they had different colors in it. Um, and it was it was something you know, bring you down, something to bring you up, something to keep you right in the middle. But it was different colors. He goes rainbow stew. <laughs> if you had your head rainbow stew, and but he knew what all the right combinations were, including back way back when we used to do cocaine. I mean, we don't do it that much anymore. But we so back then <laughs> we um we he was he was our teacher, and so. Yeah. That was another shocker to hear that, that you know that was involved there, or it could have been you know, uh, man, that was just like that's a rough one. That's like your teacher that taught you how to do this stuff so good that died from it. Plus, we just loved Kurt to death. You know, Kurt was our boy, man. He when he got to, uh, when he got on the booking staff. Uh, I don't know if uh, you call it staff, but in the booking room or booking agent um, in WCW. He uh, he was one. He was he was for the boys. He stood up for the boys. Where a lot of them become company people, he stood up for the boys, and you know we loved him even more for that. You know? Yeah, we. I've heard Bret Hart say a story that like George Steele was literally doing coke with the boys one week, and then the next week he's an agent ratting everyone out. Did you notice that with with some of these guys as well, or? Not with, I, I never knew George did coke, but I mean, I I don't doubt it. And, and rest in peace, George. I love him. Um, yeah, I, I didn't never. I never knew him. That don't mean it didn't happen. I never knew him uh, too. He doesn't I, look I, like I know that. this. What's that? He doesn't seem like the type that would. And I have. I have not. I'm not. No, I mean, anyone that does, but he just doesn't seem like the type. Yeah, he. Um, I mean, now to see him drink a beer was was fun. Like, now oh, George is having a beer, but I can't imagine him smoking weed or or Philly Blunt, or you know, a line of go. I, I just, I mean, I, I'm not saying now it didn't happen because I don't know. I just never saw it. As far as the rumors about Sean and Pat Patterson, do you think there's anything <laughs> to those rumors? I mean, I, again, I never saw it. <laughs> yeah. But he just liked you guys, right? He was a fan of your work, and he was who uh, uh, Pat. Yeah, yeah, he was, and I mean, Pat knew his shit. I liked Pat a lot. You know, not I didn't go that far. That's I got nothing against that. That's just not my thing, you know. Um, but he he uh, he knew his shit. That's why he was able to keep going. He he was able to adjust with the times. You know, the, the wrestling changes. It it wasn't. Like Bruno and San Martino days, where you just get a headlock and maybe a slam, you know, and make a match of that. You know, shit, shit evolves, and Pat was able to be one of those people that evolved with it, and 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 then even taught you know, and the, the, the new style. You know, he was that good. Um, so I, you know, I really like Pat. As far, as far as like what you said uh, with, with Sean. I get asked that a lot, and, and a couple guys don't believe me when I tell them. It's like I'll just say one, like Ricky Morton. He goes, "Man, you know he does." <laughs> like I don't, know. I don't, Ricky. He goes, "You're his best friend, you know." He's, I, and I've never seen him put a dick in his mouth. I've, I've never heard him talk about it. <laughs> what about Jim? That's Powell? not to say he didn't, but I, I, I actually don't think so. But you know, because that's my buddy, that's my partner, that's my brother, that's you know. 
But I mean, if he did, if he did, he did. He didn't do it in front of me, so I didn't have to be embarrassed. What What was the rumor with Pat and Jim Powers? Did you ever hear about that? Yeah, it was funny. Um, I forgot how it, it all went, but basically, Jimmy was gonna. It was uh, propositioned, and it was just to lay there on his back, not to do anything, just. Basically, I, I, I'm, one, I'm not going to say this, but uh, basically all he had to do was get a blowjob. And, um, you know, of course, he he turned it down. And then, you know, him, him, Jimmy and I are great friends, and we used to travel the road together then. And, he, you know, he, he, he was like – because Jimmy was good, a good worker, and very good. And built good, good-looking guy. He had everything going. And I asked him one time, I said, I wonder why they're not using you better. I mean, you got the looks, you got the charisma, you got everything. And he goes, "Eh, I think it's about that time I didn't do that. And he goes, man, if I just had it to do over. (laughs) Second guess, not laying there and and taking one. Not Uh, taking one, you know, backside. I mean, just getting blown. What What's this wolf character that uh, people are asking about? The wolf. The wolf. The wolf passed away, but that's that was my cat, and he was a wisdom guru. You know, he used to come tell me, you know, let me know stuff that I I thought I knew. You know, I, I was kind of smart. Shit, I learned so much from the wolf. Um, he was he was wise beyond his nine cat lives. But that, he finally wasn't. He didn't beat Father Time though. That one got him. Yeah, my I got my dog that's like that. Hey, <laughs> what's his name? Piper. Piper? Piper. Like, yes. Like Roddy? Yes. <laughs> Does he wear a skirt? Yes. I was Sometimes, saying, because yeah. if, wear, if he wears a skirt, he can still poo-poo. You know, yep. sometimes they put diapers on them. They can't poo-poo if they got a diaper on. <laughs> you, you told us the story about Piper breaking up your fight with Sean. or Yeah, that time. Do you have any other stories about Piper you could tell us? Uh, let me think. Um, blah, 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 blah. It was something in Ireland, but I can't remember what it was. It had to do with him taking up for one of the boys, and he punched somebody out in like one second. Um, but I can't remember the whole story, so you know, since sense in telling half of it. Um, yeah, that's the problem when you're partying. With- <laughs> well, not only when you couple that and then getting getting older, like I'm starting yeah. to get old. Um, Gosh, the memory cells. That's why I'm finishing my book up. I'm hoping for my book to come out right around the same time. I got two new action figures coming, um, two, two different companies, not with the same company. I got lucky on that. Um, but uh, two action figures, the, the um, uh, what do you call it, Dark Side of the Ring. I'm kicking off my own podcast, Party with Marty. And... Uh, um, but so I'm wanting that book, every, everything coming at least close. You know, you're not going to get the release date on everything on the same day. But if it's in the same time frame, you know, one helps the other. The, did you hear they might be bringing one, two, three kid into AEW? Maybe, maybe there's a chance uh, AEW is going to fix up your your ankle and bring you back for one last run. No, I didn't hear about the kid. Um, but I saw him the other day. You know, he was a good-looking kid when he was um, – and I ain't saying he's – you know, I was looking at him like that, like, hey, hey, good-looking kid over there. Um, but, you know, he got – he got his – he was getting as many women or more, actually more than I was at the, our, you know, our little run-through. And uh, I saw him on some show. It wasn't wrestling. It was, you know, some, some kind of show. And, and, damn, he looks different now. Have you seen him lately? Not really. Not for about four or five years. Uh, and that's about how long ago I saw him in person. Yeah. And in that, a lot happened in that four or five years. <laughs> yeah. Well, I hope he gets the gets the job or whatever. Apparently, Billy. Gunn- yeah, me too. He's a great guy. Super guy, man. Yeah. And he's very knowledgeable in the business. Luke uh, Bushwhacker, Luke, who whose partner just passed away recently, he yeah. was telling me uh, a story that you had somebody die in your house about seven or eight years ago. Is that true? 
No, uh-uh. it was way longer than seven or eight years ago. <laughs> but that was an accidental OD. Okay. Yeah, yeah it's uh, way had... different than the bowling alley. <laughs> yeah, no, no. He said you had nothing to do with it, but he said that that uh, that was something that probably uh, you've had a lot of stuff in your life uh, to deal with over the years. <laughs> Yeah, more more than my share. I mean, sometimes I I brought shit on myself, and you know that's that's part of having ADHD. You get bored so easily, you know that that you got to make your own fun. And, and sometimes it's mischief. It's it's just mischief. It was never anything serious, you know. Never robbed nobody. Never shot nobody. Never uh, whatever you know serious things. It's all just cutting up fun kind of shit. Got drunk a couple of times, and and you know even that you're having fun, you know. So it was never mis, uh, it was never uh, mean shit, you know. Uh, uh, As, malicious. It was always mischief. <laughs> yeah, you're what you're actually one of the nicest guys in wrestling, and I've I've been in the business for twenty years, and I can honestly say you're one of the nicest people in in wrestling. Well, thank you, brother. I appreciate yeah. that. Coming from you, you know, a, a man of integrity, I appreciate that. It means a lot. Now, when I interviewed Tracy Smothers, another guy that sadly passed away, he was saying he thought Sean yeah. held a grudge against him from when you guys He might have done him. what? That Sean might have held a he grudge against him in WWE for the heat that him and Bob Armstrong's kid had with you guys back when you were working for the Fuller Territory, do you remember any heat from those days? Um, not with, with Bob Armstrong's kid. I mean, Sean was kind of rude to Bob. I mean, not badly. Uh, wait, wait, wait. The, I mean, I guess this is what you're talking about. Hey, real quick. Hey, can somebody get me a glass of water, like a half a glass or something? Uh, sorry about that. Um, we were working for Birmingham, uh, whatever it was called, Continental Wrestling, I think it was. And um, that was only because we just got fired at WWF for that one day. You know, the whole story was one day. In, but so um, we um, we were down and some new owners bought out the Fullers, I think, you know, owned it. Um, Robert Fuller and, and you know, uh, Ron Fixer. And, and I promise this is not Barker. No, I shouldn't promise, but <laughs> that's all right. But um, so yeah, I don't really want to say anything ugly about uh, anybody. But you know, Sean just made a mistake. It was kind of a, it was kind of a bad one. <laughs> but but so the that night, that day, I think, or. What was it day because there was TV taping uh, and and the new owners came in and and like uh, who did this or who you know who was Sean Michaels and Sean's to me and and they said some things and it's Sean's like fuck you what do you know about wrestling you just bought the place you don't even know shit about it. you don't tell me what I'm supposed to do that night uh, Bob Armstrong pulled us aside and he goes hey man uh, the guys want you to finish up in two weeks. And and Sean said, "Fuck it, we quit now." Then, and so that was that was that, <laughs> you know. And I stuck by Sean's side. I mean, I knew it was it was. I say his fault, but um, people don't understand. Like when you're a team, if one does something, they both did. It's like did the Rockers win or the Rockers lose, or you know, it's not did, did Marty lose or did Sean lose. So, and I told Sean that in clubs when we went to clubs, he would be kind of cocky and arrogant. And, um, you know, I told him, please stop doing that. You know, um, when, when, um, when you do that shit, it's, I get blamed too. And that did happen quite a lot. In fact, I was the first one to ever win the money in the bank <laughs> and, and, and I had to steal it. It was after the, you know, the banks were closed, but, um, <laughs> It, it was it was the rockers, you know, when still robbed the bank. So it's always teamwork, you know, it's always a team effort. And uh I mean when you you know, they they don't say well Marty won the match. You know, it's the Rockers won. Right. Um I forgot what we were talking about. I forgot the question. Well, you answered the question about uh what the what the situation was in Continental. 
Oh yeah, that was that was it. No, I didn't know. That, I want to know what it was about the sons because we got along with all of them, even she, even oh, Sean. You know, because Tracy Smothers said that when he was in WWE as Freddie Joe Floyd, that he felt that Sean like treated him like crap, and he said he thought it may have been heat stemming from from that, Eagle. and 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 that could have been, um, you know, because Sean admits back then. He he was he was a handful to everybody, to anybody, even Vince, you know, even his boy toy owner. Um, <laughs> but um, you know, but he's got a better sense, a lot better. I mean, uh, you know, the Sean of today is not the Sean of yesterday. Well, none of us are, you know, of course. But I mean, what a difference! What a pleasant difference, you know. When was the last time you ran into him? In the car, or I mean, yeah, no, like when was the last time you saw him? <laughs> um, shit, I think about it's probably. Well, I haven't done much, you know, because these ankles and trying yeah. to battle the sepsis lately. I've, I've not been on the road hardly at all much in over about a year, shit, two years. So I think it's been two and a half, three years since I've seen him in person. And it's it's always the same when we see each other's, you know, hug and how you been and all that. And we talk and, you know, that's about it. We might text once in a great while. But we don't really ever. Well, he stays, you know that. He stays so busy. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't think he's got. I don't know. I think What's he's that? in charge of NXT now or something. Uh, yeah, that's imagine how time consuming that is. Yeah. You know, when, at one time he was doing the hunting show, the re religious show. And his wrestling stuff. And, uh, man, it's hard enough just doing any one of those. So he stays super busy. And, with, like you said, working kind of, uh, from what I understand, pretty much running NXT. Gosh, that's that's time for you. When you got time to breathe, you know. Would you have imagined that when you guys started together that, that suddenly he gets all this? Now, like in 2023, he's one of the most powerful people in the WWE. I would have thought that part, but I know that you know I would have known that he would be in the position of of running a company, a big company, you know, not a, not an independent one, a big one. Because I mean, he was talented. I mean, I taught him pretty much all he knows. So I, how was he not going to go to the top? <laughs> but the power part, you know, which he that he does have the power, and. I don't think he abuses it from the feedback I get, you know, because everybody always, you know, comes back and tells me everything about Sean. And, and it's like, I don't know why they're telling me, like, what you want me to do? <laughs> yeah, maybe but it's all good shit, his... most of it. And so, you know, but maybe I'm happy has... for him, you know. He deserves it because he listened to me. When I would teach him stuff, he listened to me. <laughs> Yeah, he's he's done a great job. You got to get. Uh oh, lost the volume. Lost the volume. Oh, can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me? Yes. Just keep talking. What about now? Hello. What about now? Hey, Eric. You know? you Hold up. Oh, there you are. Okay, never mind. Okay. Lost you for a second. So Sorry about that. You said you have septus now. What is what is that? Is this serious? It's a blood. It's a blood infection. We had um, we I'd gotten joint replacement in one ankle and the right ankle and reconstructive surgery on the left ankle, and you know it took for Lee, my doctor. He didn't want to um do do them both together. You know, he says it's just he doesn't do that because it's too much strain on the body. And me being almost 175 years old, uh, he thought it might even be harder for that reason. <laughs> and so uh, he said, I'll, what I'll do is stagger, uh, stagger them, and I'll do one. And he said, generally, I want six to eight months for my patients before I'll do a second one. Uh, he goes, would you? I know how hard. Like I said, we played football together in high school and college. He goes, I know how hard you'll work uh, to rehab it. He goes, I'll do yours in four months. The first one, you know, after I got, and I had it ready in three months. And, you know, like he, you know, cause he do it, the follow-ups and he was like amazed at it. He goes, I don't think I've ever seen one heal that fast, uh, from the reconstructive. He said, I, you know, I'm actually going to ask around cause they, you know, they have meetings with, with doctors all around the country, you know? And he goes, I think you, you set the record for that. And um, 
so then he said, okay, I'll go ahead and do the other one. And uh, now, you know, now that he was convinced it was ready to go. And we got the other one. That was joint replacement. That was that was probably even faster. You know, but right at three months. So after six months, I had both ankles were good to go. And, of course, I mean, they wasn't as good as they're going to get. You know, I still had to work the way back into shape and then and then strengthen them and tighten them and making them, you know, where I could do anything but jump off top ropes. My, my doctor said, he, he goes, look, I'm going to fix you where you can walk with no pain. But he said, but please do me a favor and, and stop jumping. Don't no jumping off top ropes. <laughs> so, I mean, I, I promised him that and I haven't since, but so we were rolling along. Everything was good. I moved to Jacksonville where my intent was open a wrestling school there. And once it got going, moved down to Clearwater, t- Tampa Bay uh, um, area, and and open one there, and make it you know not, not trying to mess with WWE school or nothing, but not everybody can afford their prices, you know. So I was going to make it a little more affordable, you know. I'm not going to have the whole complex, you know, compound like they have, but I mean I know the, the things to get somebody where they need to be. And they may just not have the money. So, you know, I'm going to be, that was my intent. And um, uh, something, something, something went wrong on the way to that place. <laughs> I'm an insomniac. And, and basically what happened one night, I had the, the, our sponsor, our big sponsor, I'm not going to say who it was, major corporation. Um, it was something happened, it fell through. So that there wasn't a school in Jacksonville, Florida. So I went ahead and I'm like, all right, let's go. You know, set the one up in, in Clearwater, uh, St. Pete area, and um, moved down there. And uh, one of those insomniac nights, I went for like four days with no sleep. And there was no drugs involved. It was just straight I'm ins- insomniac, um, which a lot of us wrestlers know, too. When you travel the world in different time zones all the time, it's just hard for your body to know, oh, okay, this is when I go to bed. But so, um, yeah, I, 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 four, I was on day four, and I was I was staying in an apartment um, temporarily, and to, it was it was more like a resort um, hotel type thing. I mean, see, it had a, a kitchenette. It was a, it was definitely just a, 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 a it was a very nice um, um, a hotel room, that, and and. Waiting into the place I was the house I was going to move into for it to open, and uh, I, I remember it was time to start moving. It was time to go. It was available, and a couple friends I was waiting on uh, that was going to help me. I mean, I'm, I'm, I didn't need a whole lot of you know help, but I needed some. Um, and, and like I said, man, and I was working out good. You know the uh, the, the sled, the push where you yeah. sit and push the uh, the flat pad, I forgot, the press yeah. the lunge, not lunges. Press, you know, you know what I'm talking about. You put plates um, on it and you push it and it's on. Yeah, action. yeah, it's a big old flat, you know, thing. Yeah. Man, I was banging them out in the gym. I was banging them out. And, and I use that because I got to be careful. If I were to get under a squat rack and one of the ankles gave. Um, but, uh, man, I was banging them out. I was working out good. I mean, I even sent Lee, my doctor, I said, look, look what I'm doing. And he's like, as long as it don't hurt, it goes, you know, just, but don't go crazy, but that's impressive. And, uh, but so the point of all that was I was good and healthy and, um, I had gone, but I, right before this moving thing, I, I don't know what caused it. Sometimes you get triggered into your insomnia and you can't sleep. I was on day four. For me, that's dangerous because I start hallucinating. I actually sat with the, uh, grim reaper one time in, in my house my front room he sat on the other chair like the little love seat and i'm sitting there and i see him and i'm like it, it, at that time i didn't realize i was hallucinating uh when i would go without sleep a long time i mean i i, I learned like when you see something that weird you're hallucinating you know and yeah. so um but still, like with the grim reaper i was sat there and, and talking with him and cutting up and he was a cool guy you know um he had that whole that sickle thing would just think he had a whole get up with him. And he was sitting there and I thought, well, why does everybody think bad of this guy? He's a good guy. 
Uh, so I got up to go make a sandwich, and I asked him, do you want one? I'm going to make a sandwich or anything. And, you know, he had, like, shook his head or he didn't, you know, say anything. But when I came back, he was gone. And I was like, where'd he go? And I'm, and I'm thinking, like, man, that just hallucinated that whole thing. You know, uh, so, I mean, that's when I first learned. That, and now when I hallucinate, I, I can catch it. Like, if there's a puppy walking upside down on, on the ceiling, um, like your, your little buddy there. Uh, I'm sorry, what's his name? Piper. Yeah, you know, if I were to see... Yeah, if I was to see him walk, Piper walking upside down on the ceiling, I'm like, okay, I'm hallucinating. But you still see it. Every it seems yeah. it's hard to know, you know, if there's something more realistic, like you see a few people in the house, that's realistic. I mean, you you, you might not know that you're hallucinating, you know, but weird right. shit now, like a dog on the ceiling walking, you, you're like, oh, okay, I'm going through it, you know. But uh, so all that was said to say, uh, I was, I had caught like, you know, a little nap, a little bit of, I could tell I was tired and my friends were coming to help me move. So I was like, well, do I take a little nap, a power nap? You know, it'd be the first, any kind of nap in like four days. So, um, I, I thought, well, let me just get as much as I can in. And that's, and I fell right asleep. The next thing I know I'm waking up. And there's paramedics, like two or three, and and a couple cops in in my in my apartment in the, in the hotel, um, and I'm like looking around. Then I see my friends. And I'm like, what is going on? And you know, they you know, they said, well, you wasn't no answering the door. And I'm like, okay, is that against the law? And uh, the I guess my friends had told the the apartment uh, or the hotel owner or you know what manager whatever um he came and opened the door and let everybody you know as far as the police in and the paramedics and i mean i was I'm, I, I woke up out of a who knows up like deep sleep i ain't slept in four days so i'm still like not in, incoherent trying to put it together you know like what's going on here and um they had said, well, we're going to take you in and, and evaluate you. I said, take me in where? You know, because there's police and there's paramedics. I'm like, well, take me in where? And the only thing on my mind is I, I want to get moved. I got to hurry up and get moved, get out of here. Because, you know, it was like one, they were giving me one more day to get everything out. And so they had said, well, no, we're going to take you down and evaluate you. And I'm like, no, no, you're not. I'm not. I'm not going. And they said, well, you ain't got no choice. I'm like. Yes, I do. I'm not going. And and they were like, one of the officers said, look, we can do this the easy way or the hard way. And I looked around, seeing, you know, there was like four four guys there, and kind of sizable, and I'm thinking, shit, there's too many. I said, all right, well, how long is this going to take? Because I got to get back. They said, well, if you act right, it wouldn't take long at all. Seven weeks later, I'm, I'm out of the hospitals because something happened. When I got there, we actually got video. And the reason I'm saying all this is because everybody keeps telling me I should sue them. Um, and I felt I felt weird about suing, you know, doctors when I'm going to my friends, the doctor is fixing me up and stuff. You know, so and actually, when I told him about it, he goes, "I'd rather you would." So that kind of mistreatment don't go on. Um, I walked in. They didn't even want me doing that. You know, they made me go, which I find out later in Florida laws, that they can't make you go. Well, they did. And so uh, I, uh, uh, one of my friends videoed me walking in the hospital, which they wanted me to stay on the gurney. They took me in, in, in the, you know, the ambulance truck and, and got in there. You know, once they started putting needles, you know, uh, IVs and, and, whatever pills they bring you every few hours. I was so groggy and, and just like out of it. Um, evidently they were giving me something that made me feel good. So I didn't mind that, you know, yeah. no concept of time. And plus, I mean, I feel good when whatever y'all give me, give me more, <laughs> you know, and yeah. so, you know, it turned out to be seven weeks later before they had to let me go because of the insurance purposes or whatever. But the thing was one of the IVs, uh, and I got I got the pictures of it. I can't obviously can't show now, but there was they couldn't because it kept sticking me so much to draw blood that your your veins start what they call collapsing, and um, 
uh, they they finally it hit one. I think it was on this this arm, and they they wrapped it up, t- taped it all up because it wouldn't stay in or something like that. And there's blood just running down out of where they got it bandaged with like clear tape. So you can see the blood in there trapped, but it was also leaking out. And on the, on my side, my right side, um, hip and all that side of the bed, there's just blood all over there. And, and I'm laid in that for like a couple of days. I don't know how long. Um, there was a, finally a male nurse came in and he looked at it. He goes, Oh my God. He goes, I can't, I got to take that off. In good consciousness, I cannot leave that on. And I'm like, I'm, I'm fine uh, with you doing that. Go ahead. But that's just fil- filthy hospital practice. And they say that's where se- sepsis usually comes from is uh, your dirty hospitals, you know, and you get uh, any kind of. I had no open wounds except for where they were sticking me with the needles. And um, so we, we, we assume because I got that. Oh, 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 still shots and video of, of that and the blood just all over. And then they leave me laying that, um, I, you know, and now it's, that, that was two and a half or that was a year and a half ago. And I'm still struggling to be a hundred. Um, now I'm actually thinking hell with that. will sue him. And plus my, my doctor said, Marty, you know, cause I showed him the pictures and told him it upset him. He goes, I would much rather you sue them and stop that kind of malpractice from happening. So um, I forgot what the question was. <laughs> well, well, now we've used up the time, but that's that's basically the story on, on what the what your health situation is at right now. Oh yeah, I mean it's it's it's, it's weird. It gets better, uh, you know. So I'm getting booked now that that. Um, you know, I'm getting better. I was, I was starting to get bookings anyway. Now the dark side of the ring is talking and hyping that. Oh my God, there's so many bookings, and you know, that's what I say when 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 the action figures both come out, and and uh, whether whether or not they'll come out at the same time or not, that's for them to decide. Do they want to battle each other, or is that good for them, uh, marketing wise? But. Whatever the case, uh, anybody wants to keep up, remember, check me out on MySpace. Uh, that's all. I got the other <laughs> ones, but I just, I never have time to go to them, <laughs> you know, um, but not MySpace. Yeah, yeah, I said MySpace. I'm sorry, Facebook. Um, yeah, I, and I do have a MySpace still open, but I forgot the damn go. password. <laughs> and, but, um, yeah, Facebook, you can check me on Facebook to update, you know, all the projects coming up. And uh, I think we're going to do real good, brother. Very good. Well, we'll have you back on any time. Someone doesn't even remember what MySpace was. Yeah, and I say that a lot, too. I'm glad you laughed because I thought, what's funny about it? Oh, shit, I said MySpace. But, yeah. Awesome. And well, Facebook, and let me and let me say just the last thing. Sorry. Um, there's, it'll Twitter be the one in front Twitter, of right? you. What's actually, that? I know you have a Twitter, too, right? Yes, I have Twitter and Instagram. Uh, but like I say, I, I just right right now, especially just limited it on time. So I usually do my Facebook and, uh, and I do get to Twitter and IG, um, Insta, I, I do get to them, but, um, you know, not as much. And so the one also, I have a, I guess you call it a, a fan site on, on Facebook too, OnlyFans. that I don't go OnlyFans. to as much. Is this you and all your women on OnlyFans? Yeah, yeah, I ain't been on that. I was gonna go on there just to see what Sasha Banks was about, but um, yeah. Then I found out you got to pay. I'm like, well, I, you know, I don't want to see it. What she's like, I just wanted to see you what it was all about. That. You should honestly do that. Open and only fans of of you and your sexual escapades. You'd make a fortune. Well, I mean, see, if you'll back me on it, I'll do it. And by the way, you, you got to come on my podcast one of these days. Like once oh, I get yeah. it up and going. For sure. Yeah, For sure. I'd appreci- I'd definitely would appreciate that. Well, I'll let, I'll let you close this off before uh, we make the agent too pissed off. So we'll give you the last <laughs> word to the fans here. Good, good luck with Dark Side of the Ring and everything. Thank you, man. And uh, last word is... Just remember, it's always going to be partying with Marty and um, on on the podcast. But just we also are saying party with Marty Light because I'm trying not to 
too too much partying these days. One, I want to heal, and two, I just need to. I'd like that part of my life to change a little bit. So when you come on to partying with Marty, party Marty would light 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 beer, light whatever. <laughs> Thank and you other, for watching the Hannibal TV. Please like this video if you enjoyed it, and click the subscribe button to not miss any of our latest.